The input trigger conditions can be defined in the trigger toolbar provided along the bottom of the main display panel. The first two icons are to stop and start the acquisition. So at present the data is being acquired and if any data of interest is being displayed and captured this can then be stopped for a further analysis and then the first icon would restart the acquisition. The remaining icons are to define the input trigger conditions. So a number of trigger modes are available. The first one is called none and this is an untriggered condition just to monitor the data being applied to the input channel. The next selection is the auto and this provides a stable triggered display. The next mode down is repeat mode. This is looking for a repetitive trigger and displaying the data. A single trigger mode will take one trigger and then fill one buffer and we can force a new acquisition and acquire into just one buffer. The rapid is a special mode for acquiring as fast as possible a sequence of triggers and filling a sequence of buffers. So here we can select the number of buffers. So for example we could choose 40 buffers and then force an acquisition into 40 buffers. So here we've acquired as fast as possible 40 buffers and then we can step through the acquired data and monitor the each buffer. The final mode is the equivalent time sampling mode. We'll return here to the auto trigger and start the acquisition again. The next icon is the advanced trigger library. So as a standard feature on the product, we get a, a library of advanced triggers. So for example, we could trigger on a pulse width. So here we get a graphical icon and then we can enter any chosen pulse width and force a trigger on that particular pulse. Uh, advanced trigger library also we have the uh, run trigger so this is an amplitude advanced library where we have two trigger levels and we can trigger when a non full height pulse occurs in a sequence. A logic trigger is also provided so here we can use the four input channels and provide a logic trigger. I'll return the trigger to the simple edge trigger. The next icon is the source. So at the moment we're triggering on channel A and a second choice would be the auxiliary I.O. for an external trigger. And indeed if channels B, C or D were turned on, these could be uh, selected as the trigger source. The following two icons are the rise and falling edge for the trigger. So at the moment it's triggering on the rising edge and we could trigger on a falling edge. So here we're triggering on the negative edge. I'll put it back to the uh, rising edge. This is the trigger level. So by default again it is on the zero trigger level and we could dial in any uh, re particular required uh, level. So here I've selected 100 millivolts and here we can see the trigger the marker has moved up to plus 100 millivolts and indeed we can just drag and position the trigger level say at minus 200 millivolts uh, with the mouse pointer. I'll return this to the uh, center uh, to zero so we return the trigger level to the zero. The next icon is the uh, memory position so by default it's 50 percent so we have 50% pre-data of the trigger point and 50% post-trigger. And again, we can just use the icon and move it so I could position at uh, any chosen point. So here we got now 10% pre-trigger and 90% post-trigger being displayed. Return it to the uh, default position of 50%. The uh, next icon is the position of the data relative to the trigger point. So we can select that and then we can dial in delay time. And here we see now we had a, got a delay time of three microseconds. So the data is being displayed uh, three microseconds before the trigger point. Again, I will return this to the default position. The final icon is a shortcut to the measurements menu. So here we can 
quickly add any desired measurement onto the waveform.